This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by Video Guys, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for over 25 years. And by Boris FX, the leading developer of visual effects plugins, titling, motion tracking, and workflow tools for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Assimilate Inc., makers of Scratch, the number one choice of professionals for complete dailies and larger than HD finishing workflows. Scratch, amazingly creative, incredibly fast. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, we're wrapping up our look at dailies workflows by talking about the workflow inside of Adobe's Media Encoder. Now, this is an application that most editors probably have on their system. And if you have the Creative Cloud, you will have the most recent version, which for Windows users will also include the ability to encode ProRes files on Windows. Now, in this lesson, we're going to talk about dailies, or more specifically, it's an offline workflow. It's dailies and or offline. And this workflow is really designed for you to take footage that was shot in the field in larger than HD, different aspect footage, whether it's scope, whether it's flat, whether it's 4K, 8K, bring it back, take it, compress it down to nice, comfortable files that Media Composer can work with so you can make sure that no matter whether you're working on a laptop or a desktop, you'll have great performance, especially when the client is sitting next to you. All right, so before we get rolling, we do need some clips or at least a clip to work with. This clip I downloaded from the RE website, and this is the exact situation that we would be talking about. They've gone out, they've shot some footage in the field, in this case in scope aspect ratio, 2048 by 858, and we're going to need to take this file, we're going to need to shrink it down to 1920 by 1080 in an offline resolution for us to bring in and work with. Now. Whether it's an offline resolution or an online resolution, that's really up to you. The process is going to work more or less the same. But since we're talking about a quote unquote dailies or an offline workflow, this is the process that we would go through. So I'm just going to command or alt and tab into Adobe Media Encoder. Now, what's important to keep in mind is all the techniques I'm going to show you work exactly the same, whether you are on Mac or on Windows. So the first thing we're going to do is take the clip, drag it and drop it into our queue. And you'll see that I just get the default preset dropped onto the clip. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this up for a DNX HD 36 offline situation. Keep in mind, you can substitute in resolutions, uh, frame sizes, etc., etc., as you go. However, it's absolutely imperative. You keep the frame rate the way that it is. So if you are going to attempt to link back to it inside of Media Composer, that you do not run into any issues. All right, so let's get in, let's create a setting and then save a preset out of it. So what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna click on where it says match source rewrap. We're gonna let it open the export settings window and we are going to be dealing with QuickTime right here. So what we are going to do, first of all, is we're going to navigate down to the video category. Now let's just take a look here. So our video codec, we're going to drop this down. You'll see that we do have the choice here of DNX HRHD. Now what's important to keep in mind is the technique I'm going to show you will work with ProRes as well because ProRes is an Avid friendly codec. Now something else I want to point out is that I am in Media Encoder 2020. So of course even Windows users have access to creating ProRes files right from within Adobe's Media Encoder, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select DNX HRHD. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that by default, what Media Encoder is doing is it's taking the image that is a scope image, so it's wide, and it's gonna shrink it down and it's gonna letterbox it for us, as you can see right here, all right? What it's also doing for us is it's maintaining the time code of the clip, which is obviously exceptionally important. You'll see it starts at 554401. The clip is 10 seconds and three frames long. All right. Now, for us to get in and actually decide what resolution of DNX HD or HR we're going to use, I'm just going to drop this down here and you'll see we have a whole ton of different options in here for us to choose from. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to navigate all the way down here. And if you notice as we go through, here's the 1080i versions of the codec. There's the 1080p versions of the codec and even the larger than HD or 
These are custom frame size resolutions as well, even 720p up here at the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to navigate all the way down here to 1080p DNX HD LB8 bit. All right, I'm going to select that resolution. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to scroll down, just double check 1920 by 1080, which is what we want. 23976. Now what's important here is that I want to make sure that we are matching the frame rate of the clip that's coming in. Obviously, 1920 by 1080, we want to make sure that that is set as the resolution that we want specifically for this codec. And last but certainly not least, we will set the field order as none and the aspect as whatever the aspect ratio of the clip is, which will be square pixels. Now, if the clip does have audio, which we're just going to assume that everything that we're going to be passing through Media Encoder has audio, what we're going to do is we're going to jump back to the Audio tab. I'm going to come down here and make sure that we are dealing with 48 kilohertz, 16-bit stereo audio. Now, obviously, if you need to get in here, make some adjustments, feel free to tweak and adjust as you go. Now, something exceptionally important before we go on. Because we are dealing with an offline situation or a daily situation, we are going to need some burn-in information as well as this clip is still in log color space. So I'm going to need to get in and compensate for that. So we're going to head on over here to the Effects tab. And the very first thing we want to do is we want to apply a LUT. I have the LUT actually located right here on my desktop. So I'm going to say I'm going to apply a LUT. We're just going to select that LUT from the desktop. There it is right there, log C to rec 709. I'm going to say open and you'll see the update happen immediately over here inside the output viewer. Now, next what we're going to want to do is if we wanted to get in and watermark this shot, we could do it right here with an image overlay. We would just simply need to select image overlay and then choose what image we want to overlay, whether we create it in Photoshop or it could be text that we exported from Media Composer. Who knows where we may have gotten it from, all right? But what we want to do is come down to the name overlay. I'm going to come down. I'm just going to, uh, let's bring the size down a little bit. We'll put the size down at about 10, and I'm just going to adjust its opacity here. There we go. And you'll see that what we can even do if we want is put it up here in the letterbox. So let's just do that. I'm just going to place it over here on the left-hand side. I'm just going to copy that value. Let's scroll down to our time code overlay because, again, exactly the same thing that we just did. Now, time code's a little bit more important to have a little bit bigger. However, we are going to offset it over at the same location. However, we're going to take it south and stick it down here in the letterbox. All right. So we are pretty much now all set to go. But what we do want to do is make sure that we get in and save this as a preset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this DNX HD offline. Now you'll notice right below where I am right now, there's a little checkbox that says save effects settings. Now the effects were what we just went in and added the lookup table and obviously the burden of the name and the burden of the time code. So I do want to save that as well when we're getting in to save our preset. So all I'm going to do is simply say OK, and you'll see now that we have a preset up here called, appropriately enough, DNX HD offline. I could say OK. You'll see that preset has been added. I'm just going to switch out to a different preset here because that preset has also been added right here as well. I'm just going to take it, drag it, and drop it onto the clip. Now, before we move on, I do want to mention something that's very important. If you're working in an offline online situation, what you're going to want to make sure of is that all of your high res media is in one folder. We'll just call it folder A. And it's going to have its own folder hierarchy with all of the files in there named whatever they are named. As far as the offline files go, you're going to want to create a folder. We'll just call it folder A offline. And inside that folder, we'll have the exact same folder hierarchy and folder naming convention that you had in the high res folder. So basically, it's almost like they're exactly the same folder. The only difference is one contains high res media, one contains offline media, but both the folder hierarchy and the file names are going to match each other. Now, because in this lesson, I'm only dealing with one file, I'm just going to rename that one file to be something simple for the purposes of bringing it into the Avid. All right. Now, because we are sending this file back to the desktop, like I just mentioned, and the file does have the same file name as the master, we're just going to change it for the purposes of this lesson, and I'm just going to call it offline. Now, what I want to show you when I render this out here 
is that when it is done, I'm just going to hide out of Media Encoder. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this clip and I'm just going to open it with Media Info. There we go. Now, once Media Info opens, what I want to show you in here, we'll just give it a second, there we go, is that this clip is actually, let me just move that out of the way, DNX HD LB or more appropriately and more commonly referred to as DNX HD 36. Now, with that being said, I'm just going to come back into Media Encoder for one second. I'm just going to reset the status of this because what I want to show you in here is that if I come back to video and we come back to the resolution, that's DNX HD 36. What's important to keep in mind is that when talking about 1080p, this will be DNX HD 115, 175, and 175 10-bit. All right, so keep that in mind when you're working. Now, obviously, I can't remember them all off the top of my head. If you're talking about 1080i, this would be DNX HD 145. Actually, that would be DNX HD 220 and 145, I believe. Again, don't quote me. To be honest, I've, it's been a while since I've had to jump in and remember all these new uh, you know, HQ, SQ, but you understand how it's going to work. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cancel out of this and keep in mind, we could now get in, set up watch folders if we're going to be dumping a ton of media in here. Now what we're ready to do is to jump back into Media Composer and let's take a look at how we're going to quickly get this footage in. All right, so let's Command or Alt and Tab into Avid Media Composer. And once we're here, you might be thinking that we're simply going to come to Input and we're going to Import Media, but we're not going to do that. Now, why am I not going to do that? Well, what's important to keep in mind is that we can now relink across frame rates. So I can bring in different frame rates into this project that is 1080p 23976, work with them, relink to the original media for our online if necessary. So let's close our settings. I'm going to right click. I'm going to come to the source browser. Inside the source browser, I'm going to come to the desktop and I'm going to grab that offline file that you'll see, much smaller than the original file. I'm simply going to link to it. Once I've linked to it, you'll see there's the clip there with the burn-in timecode that we want, with the burn-in name as well. And all I'm now going to do is simply right-click. I'm going to come down to Consolidate Transcode. We're not transcoding because this is Avid Friendly Media. We're simply going to consolidate, which will do a rewrap of our footage going to the media drive. And once I say consolidate, I get my favorite error, which is, oh, don't guess what? This is loaded into the monitor. I'll be honest with you. I've never, ever had any issues with the clip being in the monitor and me saying continue. And you'll see that in a matter of seconds, this clip is now in my project. I can now simply take it, drop it into any timeline that I happen to be working in, and we're all set to go to start working on our edit. All right, now as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you to check out our sponsors, Video Guys, for all of your Avid software and hardware, as well as thousands of other products that you can check out over at videoguys.com. And I also want to give a big shout out to the team at Boris FX, makers of Continuum, Sapphire, and Mocha. And don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 to get 10% off your next Continuum purchase. And I want to round out this lesson by letting you know that the awesome team at Assimilate has given you a coupon code for 10% off a of Scratch, Scratch VR, or Play Pro annual licenses using the coupon code of KPM Deal for you. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, don't hesitate to send them to me at Kevin P. McAuliffe at Gmail. Dot com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.